The goal for so many entrepreneurs is to start a business that will ultimately bring freedom into their life. But so often they end up working harder than ever before and just creating another job for themselves that they were trying to escape from in the first place. I was able to build up my business to where it could profit over $20,000 a month and required me to work 30 minutes or less every day. And in this video, I'm going to show you the exact framework and ideologies that I use to make this happen and help you accomplish this for your business too. So if you're new here, my primary business is reselling products on Amazon. I mainly do a business model called online arbitrage. This is basically where we buy products from other websites and then resell them on Amazon for a profit. My journey started almost three years ago in April of 2020 doing retail arbitrage where I was going into stores manually buying these products but I found out that this business model was limiting. It was heavily reliant on me, and I knew that my long-term goal was to build something that would bring freedom. This required a business model that could be easily outsourced, so I transitioned into online arbitrage to bring more scale to my business, and with that, the ability to outsource. Online arbitrage is a business model that could be done from anywhere in the world, which means a lot of the work can be outsourced anywhere in the world, and also, if you do want to do the work yourself, you can do it from anywhere in the world. We also have key partners like prep centers, softwares that we use to overall just make the business run itself smoothly. There are two main activities that you need to do as you're looking to outsource your business. These two things are automation and delegation. Automation is utilizing things that can automate aspects of your business. So an example in the Amazon industry is going to be repricing. Repricing is the activity of changing your prices so that you're remaining competitive and ensuring that you're able to capture those sales on Amazon. I'm able to use a repricing software, which is an automated system that will automatically update my prices thousands of times throughout the day. I consider this to be automation because it's just an automatic software that I'm using would pay a fixed monthly fee and then it's able to handle a lot of the work. The other aspect to outsourcing your business is going to be delegation. This is where you're handing off work from instead of doing it yourself to other people. It can be places that you partner with or people that you hire internally. A couple of examples here for the Amazon industry. One is an example where I outsource that work to another partner. I'm delegating our prep work to a prep center. So part of reselling on Amazon is that you need to repackage the goods, make sure that you're following Amazon terms of service, and then send them into Amazon's FBA program so that they can ship to the customer. And even within that, we're kind of delegating and outsourcing a lot of the work to Amazon through the FBA program because they're going to ship the products to the customer when they sell. But before that, we partner with what's called a third party prep center. All of our inventory, or at least most of it, goes to a third party prep center. I pay them a fixed fee per item and they repackage the inventory and send it into Amazon for us. That's an example of delegating out work in your business to another company. Some other examples could be if you have a bookkeeping firm or somebody who does your taxes, or maybe another thing with Amazon is partnering with a firm for your account health. Perhaps you pay someone to do marketing or design work for your business. There's tons of different options out there. The other way to delegate is by hiring your own in-house employees. The foundation to a successful Amazon business is product research, and a lot of people as they're looking to scale their business and get back their time are going to look to hire product researchers for their business. This is often going to be done through virtual assistants and often over in the Philippines. We're going to go through the hiring process of hiring a team member, and then we're going to hire somebody who can consistently conduct product research for us. This is essentially just hiring an employee, just like you would anywhere in any business. You're able to have the work done in-house by paying somebody a monthly salary or maybe even an hourly rate, and then we'll consistently find product leads for your business. And you can apply this to whatever industry you're in. The delegating through in-house is gonna be just simply hiring an employee to do those tasks that you no longer want to do or no longer should be doing in your business because you're either removing yourself or moving on to a higher level return on investment task. It's super important to understand these two things as you shift your mindset from doing to designing. When we're in the early stages of business, we need to be the doers and the designers. The doer is the person who's in the day-to-day -day actually running the business, doing the hands-on work and the grind and getting things done. The designer of the business is the person making the big picture decisions, the person who is thinking long-term and looking for the big overall operations. As entrepreneurs, we need to be spending more of our time designing than we are doing. 
Now, in the early stages, like I said, you're gonna have to be a doer and a designer, but over time, you wanna remove yourself from being a doer, outsource those through automation or delegation, whether that's partnering or hiring in-house, and eventually become a designer on your business. This is gonna free up your time and allow you to focus on higher ROI tasks in your business. People always ask me, when is the best time to start outsourcing? And the answer is really pretty simple. It's whenever you have more money than time. Whenever you have extra money sitting around, then you have time to actually use that to implement your business. Then it's time to either partner with somebody, bring in some help or whatever you need to do to outsource. That way your time is freed up. You can focus on the higher, bigger picture things and you don't just have money sitting there not being put to use. The last thing is understanding that metrics set you free. Not all of us are going to be super data oriented, but at the end of the day, when we can understand our business's KPIs, key performance indicators, and all the other day-to-day -day metrics, this will allow our managers, our teams, just send us reports. We can have a bird's eye view of what's going on, and we'll really understand if our business is meeting our long-term goals without us actually having to be the doers in the business. If you got value, please consider subscribing down below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.